Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today we're going to show you how to transform two old aquarium light fixtures into one custom fixture, enabling you to save space on your surge protector and potentially add more light to your tank. Let's start the build. For this project, you'll need two identical light strips. They need to be identical in the sense that they use the same gauge of wire and have the same type of ballast. We're using two 24 inch T8 fixtures we got when we purchased a 55 gallon tank setup a few years back. You can use whatever you have available and only need to decide what size of tank you're going to be making your new light for. We're making our new light for a 20 gallon tall tank so these 24 inch light fixtures will work perfect. Next we have to create a housing for our light. We're using some 3 quarter inch plywood that is cut to the dimensions of the top of our tank. The top piece is 6.5 inches wide and should provide us enough room to fit everything inside. Each of the two side pieces are three and a half inches tall and will keep our bulbs far enough from the bottom. The length of the entire housing is of course 24 inches long, the length of our tank and of our bulbs. These three individual pieces are held together by a few two inch wood screws. The last part of the housing are these two side pieces that will screw on at the very end. They'll serve to hold the fixture in place over the aquarium and their dimensions are eight by five inches for this particular project. Now once you get these three main pieces screwed together, you're going to need to drill out two holes, preferably on the same side of the fixture. A small one for your power cable and a larger one for your switch which we'll be adding later. You're also going to need some double sided scotch tape and a long piece of tin foil which we'll use as a reflector. You're going to need some small wood screws, preferably no longer than the thickness of the plywood that you're going to make the housing out of. It will also help to have some wire strippers nearby and don't forget your drill. Okay, now step one for this project is to be safe. Make sure everything is unplugged before you do anything, and sorry for stating the obvious, but it has to be said. Begin by cutting the power cord off of each fixture. Strip and separate each wire like you see. Then remove the bulb and remove the small screws that hold the housing together. Save these screws so that you have some extras. Remove the housing to expose the wiring and ballast. Pop the light clips out of each side and undo the wire nuts holding the ballast wires together. This should free up all of the wiring. Now pop out the switch which we'll use later. Save the outer shell of this fixture because we're going to be using it in an upcoming DIY project video. Once you're finished taking apart both of your fixtures, this is what you should be left with. Now we only need one power cord and switch. Save the others for future projects and also save yourself three wire nuts. Now we're going to apply some of our double sided tape all over the bottom and sides of our fixture housing. Then lay in your reflector, in this case we're using tin foil because it's the cheapest stuff available and it's easy to make a custom fit. Use a razor blade to trim off all the excess foil that hangs off the sides. Use a screw to pop out the foil covering the switch and power cord holes. Now we're going to lay in and fix our ballasts into place. We position them on the same side as these holes. Make sure that they're oriented in a way that allows the light clips to reach the very end of the housing. This may take some trial and error, just be patient. Once you get them in the right spot, fix them in place with a few screws. The way we have it set up, our ballast wires attached to the light clips have to cross. Now this is perfectly fine, just make sure that each ballast is connected to its own bulb. Then pop in your switch through the hole that you made for it. Ideally, you would position this hole after you position your ballast to ensure that it doesn't get covered. If you're having trouble keeping your switch fixed to the housing, you can apply some silicone to hold it in place. Next, feed in your power cord through the small hole in the end. Now we're ready to begin wiring up the fixture. Start by connecting the two white neutral wires from each ballast. Then do the same with the two black hot wires. Take one of the wires coming from your switch and connect it to the two black wires. Apply a wire nut to safely hold them together. Then take the other wire from the switch and connect it to the wire on the power cord that has writing on the side. Hold this together with another wire nut. Now take the remaining power cord wire that has no writing on it and attach it to the two white wires again using a nut. This is what everything should look like when you're finished. Now your fixture should be wired in parallel properly and you're ready to move on. Next we're going to clip in our bulbs to make sure everything fits properly. Again, each ballast runs its own individual bulb. In this case, the ballast on the right powers the bulb that we just clipped in. Now we want to fix our clips in place, so we lay out how we want our bulbs to be positioned and make an outline for each one. We then remove the bulbs and screw the clips to the housing. Next, we want to consolidate all of our wiring. We use some electrical tape to hold down our light clip and ballast wiring. Take a small piece of excess tin foil and tape it over the ballast and nearby wiring to help protect it from water. If you're going to place this fixture over a glass top, then you can skip this step. 
You could also cut a rectangular piece of plexiglass or acrylic and screw it in place over the entire underside of the fixture. We're almost done. Now we're going to line up and screw in our two side pieces that will hold our fixture in place on our tank. With them both in place, we can now clip in our bulbs for the last time. Our project's now complete, so let's go put this thing on a tank and hopefully not electrocute ourselves. Here's what one of our original light fixtures looked like. It awkwardly hangs off the edges of the tank and we're restricted to only one bulb unless we want to take up two spots on our electrical outlet. Now here's what our new custom fixture looks like. It has a box to your profile, but enables us to store more stuff on top, like our decor, fish food, and whatever else we want nearby. We also have the added benefit of twice as much light, and only have to take up one electrical socket. The wood pieces on each side help hold the fixture in place. We can easily slide it back if we need to get into the tank, but we have a very hard time accidentally knocking it off. Now the real test, does it work? A simple flip of the switch turns on our light, and that's it. We've been using this exact fixture for over two years now and have had no problems with it whatsoever. Plug it into a timer and you're ready to go. We want to remind you to check out DIYAquapros.com for more DIY projects and aquarium science videos. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Facebook to stay updated with everything we got going on. Hey, thanks for watching.